sacred place, we are not to neglect it or abuse it. We should take best possible care to maintain it. With regard to our dealings, we should sow the seed of kindness in order to reap its fruit. Love and humility is most necessary. Do to others as you would wish they should do unto you. The voice of Sant Kripal Singh, beginning today's program from an English recording that was quite remarkable. His English, many decades ago, captured by this particular recording, is so clear, so understandable. At the end of today's program, I can send you a link to this recording of this satsang talk in English by Sant Kripal Singh, as well as links to all of his books that are online that you can access for free on the World Wide Web. Pay attention for my text message number and email address at the end of today's program, and I'll send you links to these recordings and books of Sant Kirpal Singh. The Wisdom of Master Kirpal Singh, today on Spiritual Awakening Radio. The whole creation is sustained by God, who is not a distant deity, but closer is he than anything else. Master Kirpal Singh All mankind is one. Man is an insouled body bearing labels of different social bodies. As men we are all one, born the same way, with equal privileges from God. As soul we are all of the same essence as that of God, a drop from the ocean of all consciousness, and controlled by the same power which we all worship, calling by different names. Unity already exists. We have forgotten. Be one, said Master Kirpal Singh. Sant Kirpal Singh was born February 6th, 1894, and passed on on August the 21st, 1974. He was a spiritual master or Sant Satguru. He was born in India in a simple rural house. In the western part of the district of the Punjab, which was partitioned, the part of the, P- the Punjab which is now on the Pakistan side of the border. He earned his living as a government officer until his retirement and then moved to Delhi where he founded his spiritual school called Ruhani Satsang with its headquarters at Sawan Ashram. An ashram named after his spiritual master Hazur Baba Sawan Singh. Kirpal Singh was the president of the World Fellowship of Religions, a UN organization recognized by UNESCO, which had representatives from all the main religions of the world. It was a UN-recognized organization called the World Fellowship of Religions. He wrote numerous books, many of which have been translated into countless languages, His basic teachings consist in establishing contact with the God into expression power called the Word in the Bible, Nam, Shabda or Shabd, Om, Kalma, etc. in the other world scriptures. The discipline of universal character taught by him is at the base or foundation of the spiritual experience which gave origin to all the main religions that have resisted the trials of time. It has been defined as the path of the masters and includes a meditation practice called Meditation on the Divine Word or Yoga of the Sound Current. Unquote. That's from the Wikipedia entry for Sant Kirpal Singh. Master Kripal Singh was a spiritual teacher, prolific writer, 
publishing scores of books over the years, quoting from most every world scripture mystic poet, philosopher, and great master that has ever lived, spanning the centuries, very much embodying the same curiosity and inclusive universal spirituality we find present in the masters of each generation, of each century of the eons. Master Kripal Singh said, Fill the human heart with compassion, mercy, and universal love, which should radiate to all countries, nations, and peoples of the world. To make a true religion of the heart as the ruling factor in one's life. To enable each one to love God, love all, serve all, and have respect for all, as God is eminent in all forms. My goal is that of oneness. I spread the message of oneness in life and living. This is the way to peace on earth. This is the mission of my life. And I pray that it may be fulfilled. Standing at the crossroads of time, as there are landmarks on earth, so there are landmarks in time. The past and future are like sealed books to us. The one is in the limbo of oblivion, while the other is in the womb of uncertainty. It is only the living present that is ours, and we must make the best use of it, ere it slips away through the fingers and is lost forever. Human birth is a great privilege and offers us a golden opportunity. It is for us to make or mar the same, for it is given to each individual to forge his or her own destiny as best he may. The earth is a temple. The whole creation is the temple of God. There is no place where he is not. In minerals, life is sleeping. In plants, life is dreaming. In birds and animals, life is awakening. And in man, life is awake. As such, we are brothers of all creatures, of plants, of birds and animals. So the flowers and trees, sparrows and doves are as members of our own order. How simple, pure and loving and beautiful they are. We should learn lessons of leading lives of purity, holiness, simplicity, and divine love from them. This is from a birthday letter. Dear ones, on this day of my physical birthday, I wish you all happiness. Human birth is the highest rung of all creation. It is really a rare blessing which you have got. This has been given to you for attaining divine realization and spiritual perfection. It is a supreme opportunity for striving and obtaining a sublime experience of all consciousness. It is to be utilized for this great purpose. The various religions and faiths are so many methods evolved for fulfilling this great purpose of human life. It is the one common basis of all religions. You have been put on the way and given a conscious contact with the God power residing within you. You have to develop it by regular practice from day to day. To attain this goal, purify your nature by living a good life. Manifest truth, purity, love, selflessness, and righteousness in your life and activity. Give up all hatred, eradicate egoism and anger, avoid violence, pledge yourself to love, sincerity, humility, forgiveness, and nonviolence. Abandon war, abandon lust for power, fill thy heart with compassion, mercy, and universal love. Let the law of love prevail amongst you, which should be radiated to all nations and races. Let true religion of heart be the ruling factor of your lives. Love God, love all, serve all, and have respect for all, as
as God is eminent in every form. Preach the gospel of oneness. Spread the message of oneness and live a life of oneness. There will be peace on earth. This is the mission of my life and I pray it may be fulfilled. With fondest love to all, Kirpal Singh, 1959. Sant Kirpal Singh, what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Paraphrasing the gospel there. A wise man is he who works with foresight, but unfortunately most people never give a thought to permanent things. That which is momentary becomes their God and their life. For this life is but for a few days. No one has ever lived here permanently or ever will. To sacrifice one's spiritual future just for a few days dancing to the mind's tune. Is this intelligent? The masters try to help us to see the true facts and bring our attention to the soul, that we are soul, the indweller of the physical body. This world is not our world. O oh, beloved soul, your true home is above the illusion. You have burdened yourself with illusion's company. We have to decide what we want at our heart of hearts. We have to decide what we want at our heart of hearts. Are we here only for the worldly things? Are we here only for the name and fame of the world? Are we here only to have things of the outer world or heaven? Are we really after emancipation from birth and death? A real lover wants none of these things. He wants God and God alone. This is the highest ideal that we can achieve in the man body and in no other. So you have to decide by an honest searching of your heart what you want. Here he speaks of the man body or the human form. So long as we do not learn to rise above body consciousness, we cannot even get the slightest idea of the reality within. Master Kirpal Singh, So long as one remains in constant search for spiritual enlightenment, one cannot take rebirth in a lower form. But so long as we do not learn to rise above body consciousness, we cannot even get the slightest idea of the reality within. We must uncover the self from the sheaths of physical, astral, and causal coverings, all of which are illusory. We must attain self-awareness. Then alone can we hope to reach cosmic awareness. And yet beyond that, there is supercosmic awareness. The saints have always referred to the state of supercosmic consciousness. It is our attention that gives life to the mind and intellect. And if instead of flowing outward through the senses, it could be collected at one center, the center of the soul, we could get some idea of its potentiality. We would go up into the beyond like a shot. A quote from Kirpal Singh in a book called The Dawn of the Third Millennium, Volume 1. The highest aim of humanity is to know one's self and to know God. Every moment of our life is most precious. We should not fritter it away in useless pursuits, but devote it in the search of self and God. Someone connected with a college where the Master was speaking asked Kripal Singh, How many disciples do you have? The Master replied, 
I have no disciples. Only God has disciples. These people are my friends. I love them and they love me. Sant Kripal Singh The precious moments of earth life spent in spiritual practices count credibly towards one's eventual emancipation from the wheel. Be regular and lovingly devoted to your holy meditations, as that is the central pivot around which the whole sacred teaching revolves, and therein an all-around development of the soul is granted. Meditation is the process of withdrawing the attention from the world outside and focusing it at the seat of the soul in the body, behind and between the eyebrows. This point is known as the inner eye, third eye, the single eye, Shiv Netra, Tishra Til. In order to withdraw our attention and focus it on this point, the mind must be controlled and still. Time for practicing spiritual disciplines or meditation, Master Kripal Singh. One may devote oneself to the worship of Nam or word, the sound current, at any time and at any place, for there are no restrictions in this behalf. But Amrit Vela, early dawn, is the most appropriate and fruitful for the purpose. And then Master Kirpal Singh quotes Guru Nanak at the ambrosial hour of the early dawn, be ye in communion with the divine word and meditate on his glory. And then another passage from the Sikh Gurbani, the Adi Granth, this time from Guru Ramdas. O thou, rise early and worship the word day and night, and then, O Nanak, thou shalt have no grief and escape from all troubles. And that is a reading from Sant Kripal Singh's book, Nam or Word, a book all about the Sikh scriptures and the interfaith aspect of the path of the masters with quotes from Baha'u'llah of the Baha'i faith, Sikh scriptures, of course, quite heavily, but also the Upanishads, Christian saints and scriptures, Buddhist texts, and excerpts from all of the major world religions, in fact, are to be found in the book Nam or Word by Sant Kripal Singh. Meditation practice, according to Kripal Singh, consists of Simran, which means remembrance, remembering God by repeating various sacred names of God, repeating various sacred names or mantras, holy names. Simran, says Master Kripal Singh, is the first step of the spiritual ladder. Isn't it nice to know what the first step really is? Isn't it nice that there's someone who knows the answer to that question? and who shares his knowledge with others so that they too may know what the first step is? Sant Kripal Singh says, Simran is the first step of the spiritual ladder. It consists of repeating various names of God. This is the first step of meditation, but Simran, according to Sant Kripal Singh, is something that can be done during free moments throughout the day and night from time to time as a spiritual exercise to recenter to refocus wherever we are day or night to kind of spiritualize our day-to-day -day lives in between meditations 
Sant Kripal Singh on Simran. The repetition of the holy names is given to the disciple at the time of initiation as a guard against all dangers. It acts also as a password to the spiritual planes, gives strength and sustenance to the body and mind during trouble and afflictions, brings the soul nearer to the master, is instrumental in achieving concentration and imparts many other diverse powers. The name of the program is Spiritual Awakening Radio. This week, the focus is the wisdom of Sant Kripal Singh. After the break, we will delve into the meditation practice of Sant Kripal Singh, all about exploring inner space, the kingdom of the heavens that are within you. The greatest story ever ignored, the greatest story ever told, the greatest story ever revealed, experientially by the Masters. You're hearing Spiritual Awakening Radio. Stay tuned for more after these messages. This week on Spiritual Awakening Radio, the wisdom of Master Kirpal Singh of Delhi, India. Sant Kirpal Singh says that Simran is the first step of the spiritual ladder. That's a quote from a book called Simran. More from Kirpal Singh on Simran. The Remembrance of God by the Repetition of His Sacred Names Kripal Singh The repetition of the holy names is given to the disciple at the time of initiation as a guard against all dangers. It acts also as a password to all spiritual planes, gives strength and sustenance to the body and mind, during trouble and afflictions, brings the soul nearer to the master, is instrumental in achieving concentration, and imparts many other diverse powers. To have inner experiences of godly light and sound is no small thing, and really only the fortunate few blessed from above receive them. The initiate rises on a pulsating star-studded path leading forward and upward and consisting of numerous suns, moons, and stars and become visible and disappear again. On the natural way, everyone will first see light. This will first be stationary, then brighter and will burst to give way for one to pass through it and up. One may see scenes, figures, colors, etc., but to stay long with them will only delay spiritual progress. One usually has to cross the sun, moon, or stars, but they give way in similar manner to allow one to pass onwards. A quote from the book Spiritual Elixir from the chapter on Meditation Experience. More from Kripal Singh in the book Spiritual Elixir from the Meditation chapter. The guiding principle of looking minutely and intently into the middle of whatever you see within 
and listening to the holy sound current as coming from the right side, as perceived from emanating from the right side of the head, he is saying here, must be followed in both the letter and the spirit. All else will come in due course with his grace. Conch sound resembling that one coming out as the result of blowing in the form of a long, continuous, sweet, mellow sound. The immaculate nam is the constant companion of each initiate. The more a child grows in awareness, the more he or she will appreciate the sweet, loving help extended by the master power, the immaculate nam. Another quote from Spiritual Elixir, original edition published by Sawan Ashram. Note, the word nam means the primal sound current, such as shabd, word, nod, sarosha, shruti, logos, or holy ghost, the creative aspect of God, God in action, the God in action power, seen as divine inner light and heard as heavenly music or sound. Kirpal Singh on Guru Dev, the radiant form of the Master, the inner Master. Once the mind has been brought under control and it no longer doubts and wavers, then the radiant form of the Master appears within. There is no difference between it and the physical form. It is like a reflection in a clear mirror. So long as the glass is not clear, nothing can be seen reflected. The mind was indeed a glass which when sullied by the muck flow of worldly attachment, worldly attachments, blurred and hid everything. But the moment this film was cleansed, it imaged the universal in itself. The term Guru Dev, therefore, signifies the luminous form of the Master, which is free from and far above his physical body, and which the Spirit actually perceives with its inner subtle light. When the spirit comes face to face with the astral master, all doubts vanish and, it lab and its labors get the crowning regard. All doubts vanish and its labors get the crowning regard. This subtle form disengaged from the bodily form of the guru is termed Guru Dev. It is self-luminous and lustrous with light extending miles and miles. Satguru, or the master of truth, is the power of truth, or God, that works through both Guru and Guru Dev. With roots firmly embedded in Sat, or eternal truth, he directly derives his inspiration from the eternal and unchangeable permanence, Sat, hence is known as Satguru. Guru Dev meets and greets the spirit as it crosses the border lying between the physical and subtle regions by passing through the stars, the sun, and the moon, spoken of in the Vedas. This astral form is exactly like the physical form of the master, but much more beautiful, luminous, and magnetic. Guru Nanak refers to this illuminated path thusly. The luminous form of the master is wondrously enrapturing and enchanting. Only a perfect master can manifest this to a spirit. This lustrous form of the master always accompanies a spirit in the various planes ending in Sach Khan, the home of truth, when his luminous form descends to focus of the eyes, to the focus of the eyes. A devotee has nothing more to strive for, and therein lies the devotion of the devotee. After the break, we will continue exploring the inner world of meditation practice and experience according to the teachings of Sant Kirpal Singh. The wisdom of Master Kirpal Singh of Delhi, India, this week on Spiritual Awakening Radio. More to come. Stay tuned. Saint is in itself the solution of the problem of death. 
according to the Bible. Unless you are born anew, you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. So to be born again is to leave one's body and enter into the beyond, the transition from the physical to the astral. These are introductory meditation instructions for new people not yet formally initiated into Surat Shad Yoga meditation, also known as inner light and sound meditation. These are from the teachings of Sant Kirpal Singh. And once again, at the end of today's program, pay attention to the text message number or email address that I give, you can receive a copy of these introductory meditation instructions from the writings of Kirpal Singh. I can send you links to the books of Kirpal Singh that are online at the Ruhani Satsang website. And I can share with you a link to a video in English of Kirpal Singh giving a Satsang talk. These are introductory meditation instructions for new people not yet formally initiated into Surat Shabd Yoga or Inner Light and Sound Meditation, Master Kirpal Singh. Meditation is the process of withdrawing the attention from the world outside and focusing it at the seat of the soul in the body, behind and between the eyebrows. This point is known as the inner eye, third eye, the single eye, Shiv Netra, or Tishra Til. In order to withdraw our attention and focus it on this point, the mind must be controlled and stilled. Sit in one pose and move not your head, limbs, or eyes. Sit straight but relaxed with no tension in the body below. Sit completely still. His arms sweep inward, hands contracting to the point between his eyes. Here he is pointing to the third eye center between the eye, between the eyes and the eyebrows. Master Kirpal Singh Close your eyes as in sleep and look sweetly and lovingly, intently, into the middle of the darkness lying in front of you. You will see a dark veil, that which sees the dark veil within. Without the help of your physical eyes, is the inner eye. Do not put any strain on your physical eyes, nor turn them upwards, for that will result in a headache or heat. Pay no attention to the breathing process. Let it go on naturally. There are two currents working in the body, one of motor currents, or prana, or the vital airs, and the other of surat, or attention, which gives us the sense of feeling. The saints do not touch the prana currents which govern breathing, circulation of blood, growing of hair and nails. The pranic system of breath control is the way of yogis and not that of the saints. The saints' way is to concentrate surat or attention at the third or single eye while mentally repeating the mantra of five charged names which act as an open sesame to the higher planes. Those who are initiated repeat the five charged words one by one very slowly, mentally, internally, at intervals. Mentally, internally, at intervals. So that your inner eye is not disturbed. Those who have not been initiated just sit in sweet remembrance of God, repeating with the tongue of thought any name of God or saint which you hold dear. As you look within, you will see a sky or blue sky. If you look minutely into it, 
you will find it studded with stars, or you may see pinpoints of light. If so, try to locate the big star out of them and fix your whole attention on that. Then you may see the inner sun or moon. If so, focus all of your attention into the middle. It will break into pieces and you will cross it. Beyond you will see the radiant form of the master or his master. Kripal Singh continues with the esoteric instructions until everyone is absorbed. Become the eye itself. Go on looking constantly without a break. Any effort on your part stands in the way. Let yours be an effortless effort, and you will find that your soul will be withdrawn from the body. Those are from the introductory meditation instructions, which Master Kirpal Singh would often give out to people in public settings, in public gatherings. He would have people close their eyes and focus at the third eye center, the darkness lying in front of them, and mentally chanting, mentally repeating the five names if they are initiated, and if they're not initiated, just pick a, a divine name, a name of God that one holds dear, like Ram, Hu, Om, Allah, Yeshua, Radhaswami, or some other name, some other sacred name, and then mentally slowly repeat that name as they gaze into the darkness lying in front of them, waiting for the manifestation of light to appear. And this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. Kind of a sample or sneak peek of the initiation process into inner light and sound meditation as communicated by Sant Kirpal Singh. Today's program is focused on the wisdom of Master Kirpal Singh of Delhi, India. This week on Spiritual Awakening Radio. Stay tuned for more teachings from Master Kirpal Singh coming up after these messages. Stay tuned. Kripal Singh of Delhi, India, this week on Spiritual Awakening Radio, this satsang edition of Spiritual Awakening Radio. My name is James Bean. Master Kripal Singh says, Once the soul had won access to the Master in his radiant form within, its major task was over. The rest was a matter of time. It could, of course, be taken directly to higher planes by the Satguru, but he worked out the progress gradually, for else, as was the case with an insistent pundit, the shock and strain of it would be too great. When you join the Master inside, you will be able to perceive all things, from the beginning to eternity. The Master talks with his disciple face to face in all the plains and gives him wise counsel in times of need. A disciple should never be content until he or she contacts the master within face to face in his luminous form and talks to him as one ordinarily does without. You should gather up all your thoughts to gain this end as early as possible for then alone all your worries will come to an end. From the teachings of Master Kirpal Singh. Describing the process of reaching the third eye center, very much in terms of the space program, really. The, the most difficult part of the journey into space 
is fighting against Earth's gravity initially. The, the rocket does a lot of work to get off the ground into Earth orbit, into space. And so we too, when we want to meditate to explore inner space, to go within, we have to sit ourselves down and stop thinking our ordinary thoughts and focus intensely and apply, you know, that energy, that focus of attention and will to make that happen. And then we reach the third eye center. And then we're there. We're in inner space. Sant Kripal Singh. The masters say that two things are essential for success on the spiritual path. First, a genuine urge, a passion for it. And second, regular practice. If either one of these is lacking, our efforts will not be fruitful. Learn to offer all of your work unto God and grow in humility. Such bands of worshippers are needed for the service of humanity. What is needed is not numbers, but quality and character of the workers. I want group satsangs of individuals who become centers of life, the new life of the spirit, and not an organization of power which imprisons the fundamental values and stifles the living inspiration. O oh, children of light, be good and do good. These five words contain in them the essence of all religions of the world. My work shall be amply repaid if you live up to them. If we could only still our intellect and remain embedded with love and trust in him, then we could reach our true home without any exertion on our part. God is love. When our soul comes in contact with his overflowing love, we are saturated with his love through and through, which washes away all dirt of sins of the past and merges us in oneness with the Father. Peep and continue peeping within yourself with overflowing love to see and contact the master power residing in you, who will then manifest to you and guide you step by step onto the path of truth that your love will open for you, says Sant Kripal Singh of Delhi, India. My name is James Bean. Hope you've enjoyed this week's satsang edition of Spiritual Awakening Radio, consisting of readings from a wide variety of Kirpal Singh books and sources arranged together in a kind of order of seeking and finding and going within and experiencing the inner planes of light and sound and love like the drop returning back to the divine ocean. If you'd like to receive a copy of the talk in English by Kirpal Singh in a very clear English I might add if you'd like to receive the introductory meditation instructions that represent the beginning a sneak peek of the journey and links to various books free books online of Master Kirpal Singh you can read for the rest of your life for free on the world wide web so many wonderful books Send me a text message at this number, and I'll share those links with you. The number is 508-603-9381. 508-603-9381. Or send me an email at this address, james at spiritualawakeningradio.com. james at spiritualawakeningradio.com. Be sure to visit my website, spiritualawakeningradio.com. There is a donate button there. There is a blog button that goes to Blogger. There is a WordPress button that goes to my blog at WordPress. 
There are Facebook buttons that take you to Facebook where you can read daily spiritual quotes. Also Tumblr and Twitter, the same. Daily spiritual quotes from many sources, including sometimes Kirpal Singh. My web address is spiritualawakeningradio.com. This program is here every week exploring the wisdom of the Masters, the path of the Masters, and sacred texts of the East and the West, the way of the saints. Thanks for joining me today on Spiritual Awakening. Mm -hmm.